of you believe that the greatest communication signals that we send are non-verbal? A good percentage of you believe that the communication signals we send are non-verbal. But when this study was done, and it continues to be done, he found out that 7% of the communication signals we send are indeed verbal. What I say, the content, what I have studied, what you've heard Dr. Kinyanjui speaking about for the past hour, verbal. Another 38% of the communication signals that we send are vocal, how I sound, Am I articulate? Am I nasal? Am I harsh? Do I sound likable just by my voice? And a whopping 55% of the communications that we send on a day-to-day -day basis when we encounter people are non-verbal. And so it begs the question, if 55% of the communication signals we send are non-verbal, how is it that we, as individuals, do not spend more time and effort working on our packaging, our non-verbal communication? Let's unpack non-verbal for a moment. What does it mean? What is it? Our grooming, how we do our hair, bathing, cleaning our nails, polishing our shoes, all that has to do with our grooming. And it communicates something when we are not well groomed. The way we dress, our packaging, what we put on, what we wear, and when we wear it, at what occasion we wear it, sends loud and clear messages about how you value yourself and those whom you come into contact with. And if that is the case, if we already know, just by virtue of the show of hands, that the way we put ourselves together by virtue of our dress and our grooming is of fundamental importance and it will impact the way we are viewed, how is it that so few of us take, do not take time to consider our outer packaging? Case in point, we're invited to a wedding we're told the dress code is a particular color. Let's say it's red and black and gold. And you're asked kindly to dress in those colors. And then oftentimes you come to the occasion that you've been asked to dress in a certain way or dress in a certain period. And you come dressed the complete opposite or different or contrary to what you have been asked by your non-verbal you have sent loud and clear messages how you regard your host, how you regard the person who has invited you to this occasion where everything else is in theme, but you are standing out. Yes, you've been asked to stand out, but there are some ways that you don't want to stand out because you're not sending the type of message that you want to send. Our body language. What can we say about body language? The use of our hands is gestures, is gesturing or gesticulating. When you use your hands to emphasize a point, it drives it home. It sends a different signal as you see me using my hand when I'm doing this. And it, send a certainly, it certainly sends a different signal when my hand is behind my back. How do we gesture? How do we gesticulate to emphasize our points? This is part of our non-verbal communication. Our facial expression is part of our packaging. Many times we do not know and we're not aware of the type of messages our facial expression alone sent. Do we smile when we encounter people? How many times have you met someone and they say, it's nice to meet you? <laughs> their words, 7% are saying it's nice to meet you, but their body language is saying something completely contrary. Sometimes you're aware of this fact and other times you are not. How can we become more aware and more deliberate? 
about the messaging our facial expressions send out. Body language, our stance, deportment, is how you carry yourself, how you move, how you walk, how you sit. It sends loud and clear messages about many things. In his book, You Are What You Wear, subtitled Tips to Business Success, William Thorby says, when you walk into a room, you can immediately tell about 10 things of a person whom you've never met before. Some of them are your economic standing in life, your social status, your religion, your trustworthiness, your confidence. You can even tell your potential. Some of these things are subconscious and they do not happen necessarily all at once. But you're sitting there making judgments because I said anytime someone comes into your space, you have already made judgments about me. You already have made judgments about Dr. King and Ju. You may not articulate what you sense and what you feel and what you say. Now, some of you might. <laughs> it's all good. I met a friend, well, I call her my friend now. I met a lady in the washroom and I invited her to come in and she says, wow, you look great. I'd never met her before. And if we did a poll and study of everyone in this room, your partner, what did you think when I first saw you? When you first saw me, you would come up with some very interesting responses. And I just want us to take like 30 seconds to ask each other, when you saw me the first time, what did you think about me? Anything. And we're, we're going to be very candid here because this is self disclosure What did you think? Let's just take 30 seconds. Go on. First person, take 30 seconds. We're going to change over shortly, so be quick. Okay, we want to turn over. Let the other person give a chance to the next person. What did you think about me when you first saw me? Okay. All right, all right, all right. So let's just get some responses. And don't shoot the person when you go out for what they're going to say, okay? Don't shoot them. We just want to get a, 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 a sense of what first impressions do. So I'm gonna ask my coach, this is one of my coaches. Let me tell you something. If anyone's, this, I digress by the way. If anyone's up to anything, they have a coach. They go for training. They go for seminars like this. So you're in the right place. So I want to introduce my, one of my coaches. Please stand up, Betty. I saw her for the first time today. She's come, I think this is your first time here. Yeah, it is. And I just want you to share, just stand over here. <laughs> What you thought about this gentleman who is not labeled? Yeah, he's uh -huh. nameless. He's nameless? <laughs> nameless. So when I came in, I, I, I just got that he didn't want me to sit next to him. <laughs> <laughs> because as soon as I sat, he moved his, he uncrossed his, and then faced the other side. <laughs> oh my goodness. And what did you think? Uh, when I saw her, the way she came, she sat quietly. I told him she was from uh, <laughs> okay, so a little louder. You thought she worked for? Uh, a big company. Uh -huh. Yes, maybe a, a blue chip company. That's what boss. Okay, yes. great. Give him a hand. I'm just going to ask another, just another two here. Please stand up. You met each other for the first time. I just want you to get a sense of how this works, right? So when you go home to do your exercises, you know what to do. What did you think the first time? This is another one of my coaches and colleagues. Please face the audience. And she's also here for the first time. Face the audience, please. What did you think about each other when you first met? I thought, she's late. <laughs> Oh my, oh my, okay. <laughs> Be honest now. <laughs> Go ahead. When I came in and I sat just next to her, 
I acquired high heel dress and I thought I was in the comfort zone. Oh. <laughs> I felt good. Uh -huh. Yes, and I thought she's likable. Okay, and great. Now, what do you think? <laughs> and now, <laughs> that's a question for another time. So you see how this works. Let me tell you something. Being able to understand and get how people view us is such an interesting study and we don't have the time to do it today. But I just wanted to give you insight. Every time you encounter someone, they are making judgments. You're late. You look like a slob. Why didn't you comb your hair? Couldn't you brush your shoes? Why do you have chip nail polish? Come on, people. You have come to a coaching and mentoring session and networking. So you're going to be coached, you'll be mentored, and you're going to network. What do you want your image to say about you when you talk to someone? How did you leave the house today? Did you come here? I'm going to use some Kenyanese. I love it. Anyhow, Lee. <laughs> huh? Did you pick the first shirt you saw? This one smells fresh. I'm going to put that one on. And this one is pressed. Or were you deliberate about the message that you want to send to your domain? The truth of the matter about public, uh, about personal branding, is that unbeknownst to many of us, there's a secret. We are all a personal brand. We are all a brand. Did you know that in unison? Yes. Okay. How many of you are deliberate about your brand? Two. So you know you're a brand. And yet you're not deliberate. A true, strong, personal brand is deliberate. You've heard it many times this evening. I'm going to add something else. It's consistent and is sincere. Deliberate, consistent, and sincere. And if you're none of the three, then you are operating your brand on default mode. You are operating your brand on cruise control. You are waltzing through life, just letting anything happen, good or bad, with no knowledge of what worked and why, and no knowledge of what didn't work and why. The question is, how do you want the world to see you? Your brand image, your brand packaging sends loud and clear messages even when you are silent. Anytime someone sees you, you are being judged, whether it's for a job, a friendship, or a life partner. Your image sends loud and clear messages even when you are silent. I want you to consider expensive perfume, designer perfume, and look at the packaging. Hussein, help me hold these bottles up, please. Perfume bottles, Betty, my... Um, consider the packaging of these colognes and perfumes. You will pay top dollar for a good perfume and a good cologne. But I want to put it to you that you're not just paying for the contents. In this case, the content, the 7%. I want to put it to you that time, effort, and energy has been put into the packaging of these perfume and cologne. And I want to put it to you, and we can do some research, that what you're really paying for, top dollar for, is not necessarily the contents, although the contents are powerful and good. You get a strong scent, you get a perfumey scent, you get a floral scent, and we love our perfumes and cologne, do we not? And when you leave this place today, you will leave with content that will last for a long time. But I want to ask you the question, how many of you, if you considered that you are a cologne or a perfume, how many people would pay top dollar for you? How many people, before they even listen to you, are drawn to you by the packaging, no matter how much perfume and how many different bottles sit on the shelf, you are drawn to it. Look at yourself as a perfume and cologne bottle and perfume and ask yourself the question, am I Am I not? What message is your image sending? Thank you, and thank you.
And I think the message is clear. She's saying 55% is vision. vision. Do you agree with that? Yes. People judge you, they form opinions long before they even listen to your brother's story. Right? Thank you so much for those inspiring words. And you know, you are taking a risk of asking people to say what they think about the other person. <laughs> you know, there is a person who took this risk one time and asked the congregation, how was the message today? And the first guy, unfortunately, was those guys who were extremely open. They said, Pastor, awful, terrible. First, it was too long. Second day, you read it. That day, you never read it properly. <laughs> so he went to the second guy. They were queuing. He, he's the kind of a pastor who stands at the back of the church to shake people's hands and they were living. So they, he went to the second guy and asked him, uh, have you heard what James was saying about me? Yes, I had. Well, what do you think about the message today? Ah, Pastor, don't worry, don't worry. James was just saying what everyone else said. <laughs> <laughs> he was just copying the rest. Wow, 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 wow. You know, when you're speaking, I thought about, I was speaking in Manlini last year. And an elderly guy, he was the oldest in the place. He was 81, stood up. Very wealthy man, doing so well. And I could tell he was hardly following what I was speaking. I'm not sure whether he even had 10% of what I was speaking. And uh, when we were given a chance to do comments, and uh, he came. I was shocked the fellow followed everything I was saying. Honestly, have you ever seen people like they're not following you? Yes. Kube, the guy was listening. He came and uh, he said, Dr. Ari, I want to share with you an experience that took place. Most of you are not born. 1955. We were going to the U.S. for further studies. This country was under the British. Then we were invited for a party. We were many kids in those days and uh, between the ages of 17 and 19. And during that party, before flying the following day, one of us became so drunk he went and called the governor. Remember the governor was the equivalent of the current president. He went to the governor and I think said something very awful to the governor. I can remember it, but my career does not allow me to repeat those words. So let me, let me just say it was awful. So he came and said those things to the governor. Guess what? The passport cancelled. He lost a lifetime opportunity. These guys came back to the country. Most of them came back with a master's degree. They took over the economy and this fellow lost an opportunity because of misbehaving on that night. And I said, look, let me just do your challenge. When you meet someone for the first time, be careful which drinks you use. When you go for staff parties, you can always party another time. I've never understood why people have a party during staff parties. It's a corporate event. Yeah? Why? Are you that free? Are you that cheap? You can buy yourself a drink. Don't I make sense? Protect your brand. You can always buy drinks. Protect your brand wherever you go. Please, no, simply because it's free, doesn't, it, it, it's, it's more expensive to spoil your bread. All right, let's go to number five, bread features. Fortunately, Ray has already preempted, and I'll try to build up on what she has said, the three of them. Bread features, three bread features. Number one, focus, focus. A strong bread keeps you focused. It helps you to avoid moving to and forth. I heard of a story of a father and a son that were planting maize and they were digging holes, then laying down the seeds. Then the father's lines were so straight, but the boy's lines were meandering, they were crooked. They had beds all over the farm. Curious, the young boy asked the father, Dad, how come your lines are so straight, but mine have beds and crooked? The father said, The secret is identifying a target at the end of the farm. So when I'm digging my holes, I identify a target. Let's call it a fence pole. And then I focus on the target. I hold my hole, fixing my eyes on the target, that's why my lines are so straight. And the young boy identified a target at the end of the farm. His target was a grazing cow. And he followed the cow. And he followed the cow. Do you think the lines were straight? All right. He messed up than before. He was changing goalposts. You see, last year, and as that I were called by a certain media station, one of the four major ones, and they requested us to do something for them. And uh, it was a nice show that they want to do. And in fact, I got two of them last year, two invitations. But this particular one, we met this lady with the Rastas, and I said, look, it's a very nice program you want to do, but I don't think this is consistent with my brand. They wanted us to do a role play. Uh, like, uh, we are three guys here. We are in a, acting like we're in a club. I am the good guy. They know me. So they wanted me to act the good guy. I'm the good guy bringing the voice of reason. And then these other two guys are acting, wreck, they are forgetting family. Nice show. You, you understand the concept? I said, it's a nice thing. 
but I don't think it's consistent with my brand. I don't think I want to be seen by the country as an actor, as a player. We can give that to someone else. They're here. There are many people here who would go for it. <laughs> Let me not mention their names. They have been doing it. They have been doing it. I went to Ray's office and I met a lot of things. She's been acting for many years. Why can't they call Ray? That's, that's her domain. That's not my domain. My message for you, don't fall prey to anything that comes